Только одна эта область по своим размерам превышает территорию такой страны, как Германия. Just this region alone is larger than a country like Germany. This region is located in the vast expanses of the Sara Arkinska steppe, and many centuries ago was the northern line of the Great Silk Road. This place was the center of economic and cultural interaction of Kazakhstan with other countries. Hello, Terra Incognita project is on the air. I am Anton Fedorov and I came to the largest region of Kazakhstan, Karaganda. Since ancient times, the Kazakh people poetically called Karaganda region the Sari Arka, which means yellowing ridge. This area in the very center of Kazakhstan occupies a vast space of 700,000 square kilometers. Since ancient times, there has been interaction and mutual enrichment of the cultures of the tribes and peoples of the eastern and western parts of the Eurasian continent on this land. I will tell you about the natural beauties of this region a little later, but for now, my path lies in one of the places that is notorious for the whole world and keeps a bitter memory of the period of the totalitarian regime of the last century. In the history of the Karaganda region, there is a page that causes pain to the entire Kazakh nation. In Soviet times, during the years of the totalitarian regime, a place was created here that forever ruined the lives of six million people. In the Soviet period of history in Kazakhstan, a correctional facility was established here. A story took place here, which next generations of Kazakhstan's people shall remember forever. The time of existence of this camp is remembered by the people as the period of the Great Terror. In 1931, in the Kazakh steppe, on the area of 17,000 hectares, grew a Karlak, the place where the repressed citizens of the USSR served their sentences and from 1941, when the Cold War, when World War II began, they also started to send here persecuted military personnel. According to official data, more than 5,000 people stayed here in the mass grave. The development of agricultural areas of the subsequent construction of industrial facilities in the central part of Kazakhstan in Soviet times demanded enormous human resources and with minimal costs. Then it was decided that prisoners would rebuild industrial and food centers. In 1929, a document was adopted under which all those convicted for a term of three years were transferred to the All-Union State Political Administration, which was engaged in dealing with the opponents of the revolution of 1917. For the entire population of the USSR, this activity was presented as the protection of a communist society against socially dangerous elements, the use of human resources of unreliable citizens for the good of the country. It was by exhausting daily labor that they had to atone for dissidents. Eight strikes with a metal bar on a piece of rails meant eight in the morning, the beginning of the work day. A similar signal in the evening spoke of its completion. Actually, the political unreliability and dissidence for which people got sent here caused great doubts. Sometimes one word was enough to get a sentence and go to a labor camp without any trial. And here, no one even tried to find out whether the person was guilty or not. The prisoners were immediately placed in the hardest conditions so that they did not have the strength to prove their innocence. Only one thing was important for people – survival. The first display in the basement, a cell which is called the punishment cell. The punishment cell from the Latin prison or dungeon was used as a punishment for violators of the regime, for people who did not want to admit anything. 
difference from the real punishment cell is only in size. A real punishment cell is a room for solitary confinement of one and a half meters by two meters. They were fed three to four hundred grams of bread plus boiling water, and liquid food was given every three to five days. Prisoners in the camp were divided into three categories. The first group consisted of convicted workers, peasants and employees with sentences not exceeding five years for criminal offenses. The second category included all the same representatives of the working class, but those sentenced to periods above five years. Third group, all non-workers convicted for actions or statements against revolution, but the punishment system in the camp worked equally for everyone. Следующая экспозиция представляет вашему вниманию один из методов физического давления, который применялся. The next exposition presents to your attention one of the elements of physical pressure that was used in the Gulag system in Central Asia and the Caucasus. This is called Zindan. Similar wells were also located under the former camp of Karlag. It was used as a punishment for the guilty. They were fed only bread and water, no liquid food. There was nothing like that. By itself, being in such a well had a powerful emotional pressure on a person, and using this type of method, they were trying to break them. Karlak was not just a camp, it was a kind of a state in the state with its own military units, telegraphs, railway stations and printing houses. The camp was subordinate only to the central office in Moscow. Work for the prisoners of Karlak never ended. In the warm season, they were engaged in agriculture. In the cold, they worked in factories and plants. In addition to the hardest working conditions, Karlak prisoners were especially afraid of the staircase because it leads to the basement, where a solitary cell or an interrogator or investigator was waiting for them. Many never came back out from these basements. It was here that the interrogations of prisoners took place in two-meter-high rooms like this. A tired, exhausted, hungry and frozen man was put in front of an investigator who began to ask him questions. They would put light in their face and, if the prisoner gave a wrong answer, they began to torture them. The interrogation could take several days. There are documents evidencing that interrogation of one prisoner lasted 1,400 hours, resulting in the man's death. Over 25 years of its existence, more than a million people have passed through Karlag. These people were used to build the industry of central Kazakhstan, primarily Karaganda coal basin and Jazgazgan, and Balkash copper smelting combines. The greatest number of repressed people fell on the war and post-war years, when deported peoples, prisoners of war and Soviet soldiers and officers who were in, in Nazi captivity were sent to the camp. Speaking about the history of the creation of Karlag, it should probably be noted that it will be very basic. A food economy was needed for the developing coal and metallurgical industries of Kazakhstan. And of course, it is necessary to emphasize that this idea was implemented by more than 100% due to the development of the same agricultural experimental station of Karlag, the cheapest bread during the Great Patriotic War that was sent to the front came from central Kazakhstan and in most cases from corrective institutions because Karlak almost always exceeded the target in 40s by more than 100 percent was 115 to 118 percent. Famous cultural workers, doctors, politicians, clergymen and writers from all over the country were serving their sentences in Karlag who even while in prison continued their work. 
There is no exact number of dead prisoners of Karlak and other labor camps on the territory of Kazakhstan. We are talking about tens of thousands of people. This is more than one and a half thousand certificates for the executed people. Even more people died from disease in the hands of the camp guard. Today, a memorial complex has been established at the site of the central administration of Karlag, and for many Kazakhstani families, this place is the last resting place of their ancestors. I would rather turn this page of the history of the Karaganda region over. I continue my journey through the Karaganda region and want to tell you something about the ancient traditions of this region. I came to one very interesting place, 170 kilometers from Karaganda. There is a factory for the production of dried powder from mare's milk. From this product, you can get a Saumal drink, which is known throughout the world for its wonderful properties. In fact, there's a revival of the ancient business. Saumal is mare's milk, which has not yet cooled after milking. For many nomadic peoples, this product is indispensable because it has amazing healing properties. In terms of its chemical and biological composition, Saumal is very close to breast milk, of a nursing mother. Since ancient times, the Kazakhs began to notice health effects of this product. Saumal is effective against skin diseases, stomach, liver, lungs disorders, and many other diseases. 99% of reviews of people who have used Saumal for a month are absolutely positive. Their general condition improved, they've experienced a surge of energy, good spirits, and healthy sleep. Today, this product is produced in the form of powder, and Karaganda region has got one of the largest plants in the world for the production of sublimated Saumal milk. To make high-quality Saumal, there must be high-quality feed. Usually, horses graze freely. We milk them five times a day, and after that, in the evening, we let them go to the pasture, where foals join them. We can say that they graze in their natural environment. Horses would never drink dirty water. And they are very selective in food. Of course, we can say that the horse feed is environmentally friendly. The story like the very idea of reviving the national product is equally amazing and impactful. Rudolf Storch, who turned out to be a prisoner of war in the Kazakh steppe, fell ill with a severe form of tuberculosis and was found to be doomed to death by the leadership of the camp and was therefore released to die. One of the local residents undertook to nurse a soldier who was in a near-to-death state to health, giving him Sauma. That knowledge of the healing properties of Mare's milk helped set the former prisoner of war to his feet. After some time, Rudolf Storch recovered and went back to Germany, where he became an ardent supporter of the beneficial properties of Mare's milk and founded its production. When I came here for the first time, I thought, for what reasons this place was chosen for breeding horses instead of, for example, North Kazakhstan region. But later I found out that there is a huge variety of plants here. They are here in abundance, both in summer and winter. There's a lot of running water, a river flows near us. In addition, we drilled special wells here. We feed horses from specially installed systems where water comes directly from wells and horses drink this water. The factory installed modern equipment. There are more than 1,500 mares here. The company employs 150 people and the plant itself produces about 20 tons of dried horse milk per year. Process of the process of the 
Для начала ей нужно протереть вымя, что я в принципе сейчас и делаю. The mare milk process should be very clean. First, its udder needs to be wiped, which I'm basically doing now. To be honest, this is the first time I'm trying to do this. Then I need to connect milking machine. Получилось. Кобылье молоко очень редкий продукт и очень ценный. Одну кобылу нельзя доить дольше одной минуты, потому что больше молока у нее просто нет. Oh, there you go. Mare's milk is a very rare product and very valuable. One mare cannot be milked for longer than one minute because she simply has no more milk. Look, it's coming. Now it's time to take it and wait for the next one. Come on in. Next. И ждать следующую. Заходите. Следующий. Let's go back to history. Since ancient times, nomads called fresh mare's milk saumal, which in Kazakh language means fresh or newly drawn milk. In addition to customs and traditions, the unique beneficial properties of mare's milk and its derivatives are confirmed and recorded in ancient chronicles and medical treatises of Hippocrates and Avicenna. Avicenna's work is already a thousand years old and most of it formed the basis of medical science in Europe, Asia and the Middle East. Avicenna noted the healing effect of mare's milk. Итак, свежего кобыльего молока мы надоели, теперь самое время его попробовать. Мирверт, расскажите, пожалуйста, о свойствах этого напитка. Так, что я хочу сказать об этом молоке, то, что оно бесценно, потому что кобыльное молоко само по себе является белым золотом нашего Казахстана. So we got some fresh mare's milk, now is the time to try it. Mirror, please, tell us about the properties of this drink. What I would like to say about this milk is that it is priceless because the mare's milk itself is the white gold of our Kazakhstan. I'd say it is very rich in vitamins. There are more than 40 micro and macronutrients that are good for our bodies. It does not cause allergies. There is no age limit. Even small children can have this milk. May I? Yes, of course. This is a miracle milk. You can give it to children. Our recommended age is from six months. I would like you to try this milk too. With pleasure. Moreover, I took part in the process of its extraction. Therefore, you should try the fruit of your labor. Please, try the milk. In itself, it has a Swedish taste, because by nature there is a lactose in mare's milk, which is why babies like it. Very delicious. Yes, very tasty. And I also want to say that in its consistency, the milk is similar to breast milk. Among all the dairy products, mare's milk ranks first in vitamin C. What does this mean? That it is rich in vitamin C, boosts and strengthens the immune system first of all. Secondly, we recommend drinking it to those who have problems with their stomach, liver. We even saw this milk help cure the first degree of liver cirrhosis. We were surprised. In general, scientists are still exploring this milk because not all of its properties are known to us. It is odorless. Absolutely cannot smell anything. Yes, no foreign smell, no foreign taste, only the taste of light milk and a slightly sweet taste. Yes. What is the story of this drink? How do we know about its value? Let's start with the ancient times. I've heard quite a lot from our grandmothers that mare's milk is very beneficial and healthy. Earlier, you know that warriors were passing through our lands in Kazakhstan, women... Just as in the modern world experienced stress, and at times there were premature babies. So to feed these premature babies, to keep them alive, they took special care of them and provided thus basic care. There's a Kazakh hat called Timak. So they used to put a premature baby in Timak and gave them this mare's milk and thus many children survived. Marriott, your factory is producing powdered mare's milk. What is its effect? How does it work? I beg your pardon, we do not produce, we process milk. This is what you see in liquid form and we dry it in the process of sublimation. Sublimation in itself is separation of something from something. We use gas method to remove moisture from this milk. After sublimation process, the milk retains up to 90% of its beneficial properties. And by the way, percentage is very important. Amazing. Yes. Here we pack it. This is a single dose. I'll show you how to dissolve it. We take a 200 gram glass, pour water at room temperature. Preferably at room temperature because it doesn't have to be hot or cold. We open this bag here. This is where it opens. The milk is powdered. See? You can even try it dry in it. 
Yes, here, it's white powder. Yes, now I'll take out the contents of this bag. I remember we used to be fed like this as children. Yes, many who tried say that it looks like baby food, as in childhood, and has a sweet taste. This is our milk. Right, very similar. Yes, we simply process it, sublimate it. And now we need two or three tablespoons. It turns out that we have half kilogram, two gram, 250 gram packages. This is for general information. And two or three tablespoons make one portion in this bag. We put it here in a glass with room temperature water. You see, it is almost dissolved. It is quickly soluble milk. It is not necessary to boil. There is absolutely no need to infuse it. So a person can actually purchase a milk drinking course for himself. Yes, do not want to repeat myself as I said before, that the mare can only be milked in summer. If a person has problems and they can't undergo treatment course in winter or in spring, because mares do not milk, we process this milk so that it is more accessible so that the person does not interrupt their treatment course. And you can use it. You can try also. Okay, let me do it. Yes, please. It is absolutely no different. Yes, exactly the same taste. You see, it has the same color, the same taste, and it has all the vitamins. They are contained in it in equal proportion. This dry milk retains up to 90% of all natural substances. <laughs> Mary's milk gave me strength, and the next morning I set off. My acquaintance with the Karaganda region continues. Ahead of me, waiting for a path that is a 400 kilometers long. There is a 400 kilometer long road ahead of me. I'm going to one of the most unique places in the world where biblical legends come to life. Well, are you ready? Let's go then. My path lies through the scenic sides of this wondrously beautiful land. The nature of the Karganda region is very diverse. There are mountains and endless steppes, preserved remnants of ancient civilizations, and blue lakes with untouched nature. In order to get to the wilderness, you need to overcome a few dozen kilometers of off-road. And here it is necessary to have a powerful car, because an ordinary car will not pass on such roads. But our film crew faced a barrier on the way. The road was covered with a thick layer of dust, where our jeep stuck. Before you go to Kazakhstan, know that your journey can be extreme and be sure to find out and learn how to cope with difficult situations, for example, as the one we have encountered here. Using available tools, we are trying to pull out our off-road vehicle of the dusty captivity, but the car is too deeply stuck that all our attempts are ineffective. Suddenly, we have hope. Passing past the residents of the village, located 5 kilometers from us, decided to help us. We asked them to help us. We tied up the car with cables, but this does not help either. We're stuck too deep.
К сожалению, сбылись наши худшие ожидания, даже подготовленные к экстремальному. Unfortunately, our worst expectations came true. Even a car prepared for extreme travels could not withstand our bad road. Now we're trying to get it out of dusty captivity with improvised means. Let's see how we can do this. Unfortunately, the time is running out and we're waiting for help from the nearby village. Only a super powerful SUV was able to pull out our car and we can continue our way to the amazing place, a real pearl of the Karaganda region. Five hours of travel and two hours of rescuing our car from the dusty captivity, and I arrived at my destination. In the center of Kazakhstan and partially in Karaganda region, there is a unique place, one of the largest inland drainage reservoirs on the planet, the Lake Balkash, which is a paradise for fishing enthusiasts. Здравствуйте, господа. Hello, folks. My name is Anton. You want to go fishing? Yes. Shall we? My difficult path to this place is like nothing compared to the local beauty. You don't even have to fish on the Lake Balkhash, you can just enjoy these landscapes. Our boat is passing along the ducts overgrown with reeds. There are hundreds of them and they lead directly to the lake itself. And now we can see this amazingly beautiful place. And yet I decided to throw the bait, try my luck in fishing, but alas, today was not my day. Unfortunately, we lost too much time while we were pulling our car out of dust, and so I didn't have enough time to enjoy the fishing on Balkhaj. Озеро Балхаш – настоящий природный феномен. Дело в том, что вода здесь разная по химико-биологическому составу. Точнее, Lake Balkhash is a real natural phenomenon. The fact is that the water here is different in terms of its chemical and biological composition, more precisely in terms of salt content. It turns out that the western part of the lake is fresh and the eastern part is salty. And these parts never mix with one another. Involuntarily, an ancient biblical legend about how the Red Sea parted before Moses and his people comes to mind. Who knows, maybe we or our descendants will have to learn the ancient legends that this beautiful Lake Balhash place keeps. This was another episode of Terra Incognita Project. My name is Anton Fyodorov and see you in the next episode.